Hello, welcome to Luna Midnight Designs. Today I'll be customizing a Monster High doll to fit the theme of steampunk. For the doll base, I chose Claudia Wolf. I like her big sister body type. My only problem is with her smiling mouth. So I decided to change her head for Claudine's. For the body modification, I want to make a prosthetic arm and leg. Begin by sealing the leg and arm with MSC and draw on the design for the prosthetic. Once the design is complete, mix two part epoxy together and apply a thin layer to the leg and smooth it out with water as you go. Before the epoxy fully cures, take a thin carving tool to carve the design into the epoxy for 3D effect, adding more depth to the prosthetic. The design and inspiration for the prosthetic leg came from the movie Alita the Battle Angel. I just loved the design of the ivory body she has. Once the leg is fully cured, begin by painting layers of white paint as the base color. Part of the design are painted a gray color as a standout or second color. For the carved lines, use darker golds and browns to add more depth. For the rest of the design, use browns, creams, gold, bronze, and other metallic paint to add details to the leg and also highlights and shadows to the leg pieces to add a worn or stained look to the ivory prosthetic. In my mind, she is a high-class noblewoman who has a very expensive or very nice, delicate ivory and gold prosthetic leg and arm. The arm prosthetic is painted in a similar fashion. And I know that the joints lose their paint, it happens with moving parts. Once the paint is dry, paint both limbs with two to three layers of gloss to seal and protect the paint. To add more steampunk and 3D elements to the leg and arm, use small metal pieces and gears. You can glue them together to like create, create a little design to make it look like some of the gears and the metal pieces are on the outside of the leg instead of just on the inside. I did end up changing the gray and silver parts of the design to be this deep metallic blue. It ties in better with the overall outfit and acts as a nice accent color. For the shoes, I didn't want to cover the foot of the prosthetic leg with a long boot. So take Claudia's shoe and cut it down to the same size and shape of the base of the foot. Then hot glue to attach the shoe to the foot. For a smooth transition from the shoe to the foot, snake a thin roll of epoxy around to fill in the gap and smooth it out. Paint the shoe to match the rest of the leg and add more metal and gears to the heel and shoe base. For the second shoe, I want to create something similar to Rebecca's steam shoe. Start with drawing out the pattern pieces that will be needed for the parts of the shoe. Cut them out of different fabrics, glue the pieces together, and then glue them to the shoe base. Add leather pieces to the sides and top of the fabric. Use gold string to act as the shoe laces for the front of the shoe. Once the shoe base is, compl uh, is complete, begin to paint and add small details. As always, start with a base coat. Paint the leather, the cloth, and the shoe with cream acrylic. For the middle fabric, I painted it with a deep metallic blue to add the accent color to the shoe. For the shoe base, add a few layers of glue and then apply some gold leaf. Once the painting is done, I add more metallic pieces and gears to match the rest of the doll and also some gold leaf. The 
the arm accessory is pretty simple. Measure the length and width of the arm on a piece of leather. Cut out and test the size on the arm. Take a gold thread to lace up the leather around the arm. Paint and add gears and metal and done. The shirt pattern comes from Delightful Steampunk Lolita pattern. It is for the normal body type, so I had to increase the size. Once the pieces are cut out, sew the fronts together good sides in and not all the way to the top. Sew the back pieces to the front on the shoulder seams good sides in and do the reverse on the collar so the clean side is on the outside when the collar is folded over. To finish the top, sew the pieces together along the side seams. Once turned out, add closure to the back. For the small details, I added leather cuffs to the sleeve holes and painted gold around the trim of the collar and the bottom of the shirt. The dress pattern is from DG Requiem. To start the dress, cut out the skirt and waist pattern. Gather a strip of cream cotton fabric to create a ruffle and add the ruffle to the bottom of the skirt. Then sew the waist pieces together and then gather the top of the skirt and sew it to the waist piece. Once the pieces are together, cut a slit on the skirt so that the prosthetic leg can be seen. Add two closures to the back of the skirt. The underskirt pattern is the skirt pattern from Delightful's Banshee pattern. Start with cutting long strips of gold silk fabric for the ruffles. Gather and then add the ruffles to all three layers of the skirt. Then sew the layers to the under skirt base. I am sorry if you are confused with any of my steps. A lot of my footage has been lost when making the outfit. Then gather the top of the skirt and glue it to the main piece. For small details, add a gold ribbon to the slit sides and add more gears and metal pieces. The shorts were very simple. I just found a long pant that I had in my stock box, cut them to the length I wanted, and add leather details and rivets just to make it a little bit fancy. For the corset, this will be my third try, so fingers crossed. First, cut the pieces out from the leather.
connect the front to the side pieces with rivets and gold string. Do the same with the next side pieces, but for the gold string, make it a little bit crisscross. Also add some leather loops to the bottom of the corset and eyelets to the end of the corset so it can be laced up. I then moved on to painting and adding more details such as gears, metal, gold ribbon, as well as chains. And the corset is done! My first attempt for the face up was on the Claudine, but I was unhappy with how it turned out. So for my second attempt, I will be using Rebecca Steam. Like any face up, start by removing the face with 100% acetone and sealing the face with Mr. Super Clear. I start the face up by painting portions of her face with different metallic paints such as gold, bronze, and the metallic blue. To match the head to the body, add layers and layers of blush, sealing each layer with MSC. Once the skin tones match, seal one last time and start painting the face. Paint around the eye molds with different metallic paint, gold, bronze, a darker gold, and also a kind of green and brown gold as well. For the shadows around the eyes, I use light and dark gold and add metallic blue as well. I use the same blue for the eyes and continue painting the eyes details. It is very similar to the Claudine face up, but this one turned out much better. I then gloss the eyes and lips with varnish and the face is done. And here's the final doll, Lady Tatiana. I did forget to show how I styled her hair because I didn't know what to do until I was taking the final photos. This project had a lot of mistakes, struggles, and ups and downs, but I was finally able to complete her. I'm not as happy with her as I would like to be. My favorite parts has to be her prosthetic limbs. They turned out the best. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you liked the video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram to see more and subscribe to catch future videos. Have a creative day. See you guys soon. Bye!